and welcome to my channel i'm habiba and due to popular requests on my last video and in my igcc instagram account link in the description uh today i'm gonna be telling you how i got an a star and igcc maths and how you can too so if you're new here uh i took eight igcc subjects those being here and i got an a star and all of them alhamdulillah and I'm starting out a new series where I'm gonna tell you guys how you can get an A star in each one of those. Uh, so if you want any particular subject to come up next, make sure to tell me in the comments and I'll be checking out those. This video is gonna have timestamps, so if you wanna skip to a particular part of this video, check out the description. Let me give you a bit of a background on IDCSE maths. So, uh, IGCSE maths consists of two papers, paper 2 and paper 4. The difference between these two papers is that paper 2 is more shorter questions, questions that don't require that much steps. Um, pretty straightforward, I would say, in most cases. Uh, paper 4, on the other hand, is m way more challenging. It's, uh, questions have more marks, they require more steps, um, and the difference in timing is paper 4 has more timing, of course, and uh, paper 4 has more weightage. Maths is all about understanding concepts so that you could apply them. Um, and the way I would understand concepts is in three methods. Um, the first one being in the classroom, and this is primarily how all of us get our concepts from our information. Um, this is why I highly recommend being attentive in the classroom focusing with the teacher is gonna save you so much time and effort it's gonna save you like mistakes you're gonna make and it's gonna save you a lot of misconceptions this is also where you could clear off any doubts and stuff like that and also whenever the teacher asks you to solve a question in class solve it and attempt it no matter like how much you think okay i i don't know uh how to solve this question i've never tried that question before um you know or anything like that just try it uh, because if you get it wrong, you're going to learn from your mistake. The classroom is the best place you could improve yourself in. And then, so that practicing at home gets better. Um, the next method I would use is my textbook. The textbook that our school used was this one. It was pretty nice, pretty average. Uh, nothing too special, your average math textbook, you know. Um, the final method, which I think like all of us use, is YouTube. YouTube is such a lifesaver, literally. So whenever I don't understand how a question is solved uh, and I'm at home and I'm practicing, YouTube, literally. I write down uh, in the search bar the particular topic I have and boom, it pops up and I solve. Uh, I understand. If I don't understand from the video, there are multiple other videos. There are a lot of videos on IGCC maths, uh, a lot of re YouTube resources everywhere. I don't follow a particular channel. Uh, I just search up in the bar and that's it. Like in class, when I can't understand from the teacher, uh, I would ask my friend to explain how they got their answer. Practice. I just say e maths is all about practice. Literally, practice, practice, practice. Um, this is how you improve. Maths is all about applying concepts. You apply them by practicing. Um, there, you could practice two things, of course. You could practice the textbook and practice past year papers. Uh, I'd only recommend practicing the textbook when you're just starting out the topic. Uh, you have not completed the topic yet. You're just starting to get familiar with it or you're not strong with a certain topic. Uh, that's when I recommend solving textbook questions. Other than that, if you have finished the topic or if you're already good in the topic, I recommend just going straight into past paper questions and saving time. Uh, going to past paper questions is way more time efficient and your questions, your exam questions are going to be like the past paper questions and not the textbook questions at all. Uh, so save yourself all that time and effort and just go to past paper questions. However, don't go if you're not ready. It's okay. Go at your own pace. Um, if you're not ready, practice textbook questions. You're going to get to the point where you're going to be able to solve past paper questions. Uh, I recommend at least five years of past paper questions. Uh, at least. So if you could do more, uh, of course you can, but I understand that we're 
in IGCSE is we're juggling multiple subjects so that might not be very possible uh, but I did about five years um, when I did not have a lot of time and it was enough and more but you're gonna get more familiar with the wordings of the question you're gonna get more familiar with the structures of the question um, and these structures and wordings they are gonna be the way that your board exam is gonna be like um, Usually the textbook questions are not the same wordings or structures um, and they're not the way your board exam is going to be like. If you practice a lot, you'll, you'll find the differences between paper 2 and paper 4 and what you should expect from each of these papers. So I'll give you an example. Uh, paper 4, from a lot of practice, I noticed that uh, it has the function graphs. Uh, these graph functions, they have about 5 marks or so. And they don't pop up in paper two. They're always in paper four. Um, and I notice that through practice. And you will notice those patterns a lot when you practice. And only through that. Uh, this is helpful because you will set expectations for your board exam. Uh, so again, you don't get surprised. Uh, and you're familiar with, with everything. Uh, now, of course, if you don't understand how to solve a particular question or anything like that, go to your resources or sources of understanding concepts the ones that we've discussed before you will always be able to clear your doubts so solve the questions the past paper questions and check with the marking scheme always check with the marking scheme uh check the steps mark your answers and see how you did on the paper uh do the same thing with textbook questions they have the answers at the back uh but textbook questions don't really show you the method marks uh, so that's another difference. That's why I also recommend past paper questions more than textbook questions. Now, I will tell you the four most important things you need to survive IGCSE maths. The first being uh, a past paper mistakes log. So what this basically is, um, is that when I was doing IGCSE maths, I had this tiny notebook. It was literally 30 pages and it was this, this, size it's not that big uh and every time i did a mistake so i for example i'm solving a past paper and i just got done and i checked my entire paper and i marked it down really strictly and everything like that every time i do a mistake i write it down in that in that notebook so i'll write down the year and i write down the mistake why i did that mistake uh what's the correct answer how to avoid the mistake i'll write down the mistake in all details if it's something that is common sense like Oh, I forgot this minus or plus sign. I'm not going to write it, of course. Uh, I'm talking about new concepts or something that makes me go, oh, that makes sense. You know, something that's worth writing down to refer to later. Um, this is helpful because you can always refer back to that notebook later on uh, when you're practicing math. Um, it shows you all the mistakes um, so that you can avoid them in the future. Uh, this is how you can get the most out of your past papers because most probably when you solve a past paper you're not going to come back to it later because you have more years to solve uh, so it's better to always write down your mistakes for reference uh, I also use this notebook to write down information that I had just learned um, while for example I'm in school or through a YouTube video or from the textbook like any new point or any new method or concept I'll write that down in the notebook so that I don't forget it. There's a lot of stuff I would forget in maths, like, um, for example, the shapes of the graphs um, at first. I, I like I didn't want to keep going back to the textbook like to refer to the shapes of the graphs. I wanted it to be somewhere where I can always refer back to it. So, of course, I would write that down in the notebook. Same thing goes with any other thing in the math textbook that I want to refer back to. I'll write it down in the notebook. That notebook was a lifesaver. You need that. So I just wrote down the year of the past paper and the mistakes. That's it. Uh, you don't need to make it too fancy, really. Um, the next essential thing is a past paper tracker. So every time you do a past paper, you write it down in that tracker. I did this past paper of that year, that season, that variant, um, and all that stuff. And then I write down the marks I got. Uh, so every time I solve... I'd write down that past paper, I'd write down the marks, uh, and this is this, it tracks what you've done, what you've not done, it helps for planning, like what I'm gonna do next, um, and it, it shows you the progress of the marks. 
so you get to see your improvement or anything like that it's very motivating uh, and it helps keep my brain more organized and uh, I don't know about you but uh, of course when I'm not organized m my thoughts are all over the place it's clustered and I feel not very motivated so uh, it helped me get my life together my maths together uh, and all that stuff so of course when you see the improvement in past papers you can always go back and redo a past paper that you did bad on and see how much you've improved essential number three is a formula sheet you need that so certain chapters in math igcse like trigonometry and the volume and service area chapter i'm not sure what it's called these chapters they have a lot of formulas um so i write them down on a piece of paper not a piece of course write it down on um paper and staple them and keep that formula sheet with you you are not given a formula sheet during your igcse exam so you're gonna have to learn them uh, of course, when you practice a lot, you will naturally just learn them uh, you, because you've applied them a lot, you know, so you don't need to force yourself to learn them. But at first, yes, I recommend learning them. So like um, put them on flashcards, for example, or if you think that's a waste of time, which is OK. Just test yourself on them every now and then. And then the fourth most important thing, your calculator. Your calculator is your best friend. So that means you have to get familiar with it, get more comfortable with using it because you're going to be using it all the time. N no mental math here. You're going to be using it. And I, back in the day, I have seen my classmates do mistakes, not because their concepts were wrong, but because the way they key in the information in the calculator is wrong. The way you do fractions in the calculator, the way you do roots, uh, all that stuff, how you square, you put brackets when you square. All these things they save you marks so get familiar with it you don't want to lose marks here uh, there's also uh, particular modes you need to know in your calculator so for example you know how to solve a quadratic equation on your calculator calculator I don't know why I, I, I'm like pronouncing it weird now it doesn't sound right to me uh, but yeah like how to sketch a graph by plotting down points using your calculator calculator all the stuff you know keep it on degree mode okay because i've done this mistake in my word exam where i had it on radian mode by mistake uh so don't play around with the modes just keep it on degree mode uh because when i had it on radian mode i solved the entire exam and then my trigonometry question answers were wrong because the calculator calculator switches them up so make sure it's on degree when you enter your exam so that you don't do the mistakes that i've done like of course i recognized it in the exam i was like oh my god and i i came back like to all the questions and rewrote the answers to those questions um but avoid that mistake keep it on degree mode uh now i'll give you some exam tips so tips you can apply when you're solving past papers or during your model exam if you come across a question and you don't know how to solve it you skip it okay if it's taking you so long to plan or if it's taking you so long to get an idea of how to solve it skip it for now because time is very 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 valuable so one minute you're like oh i have a lot of time left and then boom you look at the clock and you're like oh my god there's no time left <laughs> this has happened so many times during my board exams so don't waste any second uh, if it's taking you so long skip and then come back to it when you have the time to do that. Complete your entire exam and then come back to it. Skip those questions and come back to them later. Uh, plan out your questions in blank pages. So at the end of your paper, you, you're going to find a couple of blank pages. Um, if you have a lot of planning to do, or if you're not sure whether your method is correct or not, or if you want to test out a couple of things in the exam, do it in the blank papers uh, so that you don't keep erasing on your answer spaces. Um, and yeah. Practice a lot. Maths is all about practice. There's no way around it. You cannot go into the exam thinking, oh, I know the concepts. I'm going to be able to ace it. It's about practice. You can know the, like all the concepts, but with zero practice, you're not going to be able to score marks. So, And there's no way around it. You're not going to be able to get an A star without practice. So take the time out of your day to solve papers and correct them and understand your mistakes and write down those mistakes. 
that's all you need to do and repeat you're gonna see the progress trust me you are gonna go your time your speed management speed management your time management is gonna get better your speed is gonna increase uh the way you're gonna think of how to answer the question is is gonna get better um you're gonna understand what the question wants like faster because you've solved a lot of these questions um the questions of topics that you thought were so hard they're gonna start feeling like they're normal questions you know all of that and you're gonna gain confidence too you want to go into your board exam with confidence and this is only gonna happen when you solve a lot of past papers and it's fun it's fun with the mistakes you do uh you sometimes can be let down but when you see improvement in marks you will get motivated trust me between one past paper and another you will see improvement so i'll link down below websites that i found helpful like where i get my past papers from uh or anything like that or the syllabus uh and i hope this video was helpful uh if you did find it helpful subscribe i'll be doing more videos like this if you want to see other videos like this comment down below for what subject you'd like to see this for and i will be looking at the comments and I'll be replying back. If you have any feedback, comment it down below. And I'll also look at that. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Link in the description. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Share this with your friends. Like this video. See you next time. Bye bye.